This is the story of a journey. A journey to search for the beauty of a people and their relationship with God. Is there historical evidence of the Creator God in Japanese culture? Did God leave His fingerprint within the culture and history of Japan? Have Western Christian culture and traditional missionary values overlooked the beauty and grace of traditional Japanese culture? This is a journey so unorthodox it defies religious traditions to search for the truth wherever it may be found. This is a journey of beauty, history, and culture. But most of all, it's a story of love for the Japanese people and the culture that they hold so dear. This journey is the fulfillment of many years of research and is a search to uncover evidence of the Creator God in Japanese history and to look deeper to find how God has revealed Himself within Japanese culture. To gather this evidence, a team from the United States and Japan traveled to historic sites including museums, shrines, and temples and interviewed a number of experts and authorities. Daniel Kikawa is an author who has traveled around the world teaching people how to build biblical cross-cultural relationships. He's researched this subject for over 18 years. The Bible says that all people had a knowledge of the Creator. If this is true, then we should find a knowledge of the Creator God within the history and culture of Japan. Today, Japan is a modern industrial nation. Known for its innovative technology and busy lifestyle, the culture of Japan has taken on a more global look and feel. To find more traditional culture, our research begins at the first organized settlements in Japan. The earliest settled community discovered so far is at Aomori on the northern coast of Honshu. At this former settlement of an estimated 500 people, our team looked for the first organized efforts to seek God. One of the most intriguing aspects at Aomori are the high towers. These towers were built with huge logs and placed to exact specifications. Scholars are divided about whether high towers were for worship or if they were used as watchtowers. The majority seem to believe that they were places of worship. Although there is some evidence of worship at Aomori, there are no definitive answers. Over time, Japanese settlements moved south. The high towers found furthest south are at Yashinagari on the southern island of Kyushu. These high towers are also built to exacting specifications similar to those in the north. Within one of the recreated high towers at Yashinagari is this worship scene constructed by a team of archaeologists. Although we can see that the Japanese people are very religious, there are still no answers. The next step in our journey to find information about worship in Japan is to learn from the Shinto religion, the oldest known religion in Japan. Izumo is one of the oldest and most revered Shinto shrines in Japan. The inner sanctuary of Izumo, although still raised up, used to be a high tower. This mural outside of Izumo Shrine shows an artist's conception of the former high tower inner shrine. At one time, this shrine was the tallest wooden structure in all of Japan at over 50 meters. The remains of the high tower are still visible today. The current inner shrine was built in the Edo period. One of the gods worshipped at Izumo is Amino Minakanushi. Preserved within the Izumo Museum is this scroll showing Amino Minakanushi at the top center. Amino Minakanushi means the god in the glorious center of heaven. Amino Minakanushi 
is flanked by the two other gods of creation. These three are separate from the other gods or kami of Japan because they are spirit and not seen. Who is this god, Amino Minakanushi? Can we find evidence of him in the written records of the history of Japan? The oldest written document in Japan is called the Kojiki, the records of ancient matters, written in 712. The Kojiki records in the first paragraph of the preface, now when chaos had begun to condense, but force and form were not yet manifest, and there was not named, not done, who could know its shape? Nevertheless, heaven and earth first parted, and the three deities performed the commencement of creation. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 1 and 2, In the beginning, Elohim, literally the gods, Biblically, this would mean the Trinity, created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Scientific evidence also confirms this beginning of creation. Dr. Stephen Hawking is heralded as the most brilliant theoretical physicist since Einstein. In his best-selling book, A Brief History of Time, From the Big Bang to Black Holes, he writes, In 1929, Edwin Hubble made the landmark observation that wherever you look, distant galaxies are moving rapidly away from us. In other words, the universe is expanding. It became more and more clear that the universe must have had a beginning in time. Dr. Hawking states in his book, it would be very difficult to explain why the universe should have begun in just this way, except as the act of a God who intended to create beings like us. The first paragraph of the Kojiki states, The names of the deities that were born, literally that become, in the plain of high heaven, when the heaven and earth began, were the God in the glorious center of heaven, Amino Minakanushi, Next, the God of high generative power. Next, the God of divine generative power. These three deities were all deities born alone, not procreated, and hid their persons. The respected Japanese scholar Hirata Atsutani wrote the following about Amino Minakanushi. We understand that he, Amino Minakanushi, has sovereignty over all the things in the universe. Since this great kami thus exists without a beginning, it is only appropriate that he be called the ultimate first deity, and that no words should possibly exist to describe the heights and depths of his virtuous power. It makes perfect sense that the Japanese people would have this revelation of God. The Bible says, What may be known about God is plain to all men because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. This means that people can observe creation around them and know there must be a higher power that created these awesome wonders. My colleagues and I have researched cultures all over the world, and wherever we have looked long enough, we have found the name of a creator God. Although knowledge of the God in the glorious center of heaven is vague and he is an unknown God to most Japanese, there is overwhelming evidence of his existence. In Kyoto City is a shrine thought to be built around 500 AD called Kaiko no Yashiro. Ame no Minakanushi is also worshipped here. Next to the shrine is a spring with white stones placed over it and a unique three-legged torii gate to the spring. The spring represents the center of the universe and the place where Amino Minakanushi dwells, and the three-legged gate, the gateway to the center of heaven. A stream and pond is formed by the spring. This signboard outside of the shrine says, within the precincts of this shrine is a holy pond called Moto Tarasu no Ike, Tarasu means to reform or to correct errors. 
The spring is where guilty people purify their body and soul in an act very similar to baptism. At the very top of Mount Kumpirisan, located just outside Kyoto, stands this monument with Ami no Minakanushi, the God in the glorious center of heaven, at the top center. Here we are in front of Usa Shrine. It's the most important of the over 40,000 Hachiman Shrine. And this is really important to us in our search because in this shrine is a monument to Ami no Minakanushi, the God in the center of heaven. This reminds me of the unknown God at Athens that the Apostle Paul spoke of in Acts 17 of the Bible. Ami no Minakanushi, however, is much more definite than the unknown God at Athens because he is not just one among hundreds of gods but he is the first God, the uncreated creator, and the God at the very center of heaven. The beginnings of the current sport of sumo wrestling are estimated to be about 2,000 years ago. One of the rituals of sumo is called tegatana okiru. It is said that the winning wrestler expresses his gratitude to the three gods of creation by making three swift hand movements representing Ami no Minakanushi and the other two gods of creation. Looking at the evidence, it seems that the Japanese people have a historical name for the Creator God, and that name is Ami no Minakanushi, the God in the very center of heaven. I have traveled to many of these different sites and shrines, and I've seen and heard the evidence, and I am convinced that we have a name for God and that name is Ame no Minakanushi. Could this Ame no Minakanushi be the same creator God that the Bible also speaks of? Several years ago, I came across the uh, Ame no Minakanushi uh, name in the, in the Kojiki for the first time. And uh, in a uh, message in seminary chapel, I uh, used that and suggested that uh, this is a, a name from olden times that uh, express, uh, it seems to me, the, the concept of the Christian God. This is not uh, one of a myriad of gods, but it's the central God of, of, of heaven. Is there other cultural and historical evidence of the Creator God's legacy to the Japanese people? The Bible states, from one man, God made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, for we are his offspring. If the Bible is true, and over the thousands of years of Japanese history and culture, God has been reaching out to the Japanese people, and the Japanese people have been reaching out for Him, then surely there must be many things within the history and culture of Japan that reflect this relationship. When we look at the beauty and traditions of Japanese culture, we see many admirable values that reflect the values of the Creator, such as honoring parents, elders, and those in rightful authority, humility and self-sacrifice. In Japanese culture, there are many wonderful traditions that a follower of Jesus can take part in. One of the most venerated and beautiful is the tea ceremony, or sado, the way of tea. This is Sen Gen Shitsu, former Uda Senke Grand Tea Master, Sen So Shitsu the 15th. Dr. Sen is the best-known proponent of Sado in the world and is a direct descendant of Sinu Rikyu, the great tea master. In July 2003, we sat down to discuss these issues with Dr. Sen. Although Dr. Sen is not a Christian, his wife was a Christian and he attended Doshisha Christian University, so he had good knowledge of Christianity and the Bible. Dr. Sen and many scholars have noted a similarity between the tea ceremony and Christian communion. To gain clues as to why they are so similar, we must again look into the past. 
Francis Xavier began the Catholic mission to Japan in 1549. By 1587, there were an estimated 200,000 followers of Jesus in Japan. Dr. Sen told us that Francis Xavier encouraged priests to learn Sado for the purpose of evangelism, and so the priests studied tea under his ancestor, Sen Nurikyu. Sen Nurikyu, the great tea master, created his most famous innovations to the way of tea during the last 10 years of his life, during this period of great growth among the followers of Jesus in Japan. It is estimated that some 60 feudal lords became followers of Jesus. Some of these became followers of Sin Norikyu's way of tea. According to the book Tea in Japan, at least five of Sin Norikyu's top seven disciples were Christian lords. Several lords who sponsored parts of the Daitokuji Temple built tea rooms and learned the way of tea from Sin Norikyu there. They also became followers of Jesus. The Lord Hosokawa and his wife Gracia, who became a famous Christian, were disciples of Sin Norikyu. They built the Kotu-in part of the Daitokuji Temple Complex, including this tea room. Otomo Soren, a famous general who was a Buddhist monk, built the Zuiho-in part of the Daitokuji Temple. He later became a follower of Jesus. To commemorate this, a garden was built during the Showa period with stones in the shape of a cross. Unfortunately, in 1591, Sen Nurikyu was ordered to commit seppuku, or suicide. The reasons for this order are still a mystery. Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Japan's chief administrator, was given information that foreign Christian countries had colonial plans for Japan. Therefore, a persecution of Christians began in 1587. For the next 250 years, up to 200,000 followers of Jesus were martyred. But trials and opposition did not deter the Japanese followers of Jesus, and a large underground church of hidden Christians flourished. Followers of Jesus owe a debt of gratitude to Buddhists in Japan. During this time of persecution, Buddhist monks hid followers of Jesus in Buddhist temples to keep them from being killed at the risk of their own lives. They also hid this bell from the first Christian church in Kyoto. It's currently held in trust at the Shunko Inn portion of Miyoshinji Temple Complex in Kyoto. There are many remaining symbols of the underground church or hidden Christians. This cross with a Buddha figure on it was plastered into the wall with only the Buddha showing. Thus, when a follower of Jesus was praying in front of the Buddha, no one would know he was praying to Jesus. This bronze magic mirror was a secret sign to hidden followers of Jesus. When one looked into it, one would only see his reflection. However, if the reflection off of the mirror were shined onto a wall, the figure of Jesus on the cross would appear. Lord Furuta Oribe, another famous disciple of Sinurikyu, is said to have designed stone lanterns of this type so that hidden Christians could use them. A cross and a Christian figure can be carved into the base of the lantern. The lantern was designed without a pedestal. Therefore, it was said, after the grass grows, Jesus is hidden. Even before the time of persecution, Freud reported that traveling missionaries would frequently hold communion in the tea room of a local Christian. Many scholars believe that after persecution began, hidden Christians continued to use the tea rooms for communion, disguised in the tea ceremony. What are some of the similarities between the way of tea and Christian communion? Dr. Sen told us that once, when he was doing sado for the Pope at the Vatican, a priest began doing communion at the same time. While he was cleansing the utensils for sado with his napkin, the priest was also cleansing his utensils for communion with his napkin. The acts of cleansing the utensils were exactly the same. There are other similarities like the washing laver situated outside, the wafer or sweet cake eaten first, the lifting of the cup and the turning of the cup.
Christian metaphors can also be found in Sado. Dr. Sen told us that the small entrance is the narrow gate. You cannot enter with your sword or with other weapons. You must put them away and enter naked. And that every person in the tea room is equal and there is no distinction. The tea room is the only place in Japanese society where there is no rank. All guests are honored and humbly served equally. The tea master cleanses and prepares a place for his guests and then serves them in great humility. Dr. Sen said, we have to teach others a servant's heart and that is the teaching of Jesus, isn't it? And that is the teaching of Sado. All of these similarities and metaphors would have provided hidden followers of Jesus with a perfect disguise for communion. Why was communion so important to Japanese followers of Jesus that they would risk their lives to do it? One of the most important Christian sacraments is communion. In communion, followers of Jesus eat bread, which signifies the body of Christ, and drink wine, which symbolizes the blood of Christ. Followers of Jesus believe that the Creator loves us all, but He had one problem. A perfectly holy God could not commune with us because we are not holy. So He came down to us and took upon Himself all of the sins, mistakes, and shame of the entire human race and was executed for it. Now that all the penalty of our errors and our shame is taken care of, we can freely commune with God. Partaking of the symbols of His body and blood commemorate His death, which made this communion possible, so followers of Jesus had to gather together to do this in spite of the danger of being caught. Some Japanese have been taught that if they become a follower of Jesus, they can no longer be involved in the way of tea. It's obvious that Japanese followers of Jesus can find intimate meaning and enjoy the beauty of the tea ceremony, just as any other Japanese can. We asked Dr. Sen how he would feel if followers of Jesus did communion as Sado. He replied, I wouldn't think there is anything strange about that. The magnificence of the Creator's name in Japan, the God in the glorious center of heaven, is an important legacy of his relationship with the Japanese people. For it is in God's diversity that he gave the Japanese people their culture. And it is in the culture that they can find their identity in God. As it says in Romans 1.20, we can know the Creator's heart by observing His creation around us. Clearly, God loves the beauty of the diversity He has created both in nature and in His children. Throughout the world, followers of Jesus from many cultures are finding that God loves them just as He created them and that He loves the cultural expressions that flow from them. They are finding many things within their cultural identity that were ordained by God and are finding new and deeper meaning as they worship God in traditional ways. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't conflict with your loyalty to your country, government, leaders, or parents. In fact, the Bible commands us to be loyal to them. You can be a follower of Jesus and still be fully Japanese. God desires to see the beauty of the Japanese people, and so do I. God loves the Japanese people. God has made a unique culture there that should not be overshadowed by anybody else's culture. One of the things that I regret actually is the way that many people groups, including the Japanese, have been overshadowed by the culture of people who have ministered to them. And I see that in my people group, many times when we minister, there is a cultural arrogance among us that um, communicates a superiority to others and does not release and celebrate the joy of that people's uniqueness. And uh, I have often had to ask forgiveness for that. In fact, I do now. I, I wish those things had never happened. 
As a member of the International Reconciliation Coalition Board, Daniel believes that it's important to let the Japanese people know that God loves them just the way they are. We have told you that your culture was not honorable and not good enough for God. As an American Christian, I want to ask you for forgiveness for that. And tell you that God has left so much beauty in your culture. And uh, please, I want to do this to say, please forgive me. Please forgive me. <laughs> The Creator God has never left Japan or the Japanese people. And it is in Pastor Hamasaki's prayer that we hear the heart cry of Japanese followers of Jesus. In our long history and in our Japanese culture, you have manifested your true nature of caring for us by your love and presence. We thank you. You have shown us that you are indeed our God, our Japanese God, and not a foreign God. You are a part of Japanese history and culture. In the past, we've had some misgivings about being Christians. Please guide us to truly understand you and to know you. I thank you once again for placing me here in Japan. Please love me as I am.